UK used to mean United Kingdom, but ask anyone today and it will stand for unbelievable crime wave. And no one is safe, especially not from perpetrators like Chris Chan. So, I welcome all of you back to another Chris Chan quickie reading and now we come on to an aspect of the world that Chris sort of comprehends but the problem is is that it doesn't stop him from doing heinous things so these would be uh in many ways quite hard to justify because ignorance of the law is no excuse to commit it and for reasons we're about to get into well chris knows fine well what he's done and the consequences he paid are more than justified so let's begin this article is about Chris's criminal offences for the warrant in depth civil cases, see depth. For Chris's personal views on legislation, see Chris and politics, which we will do in a matter of days. I was about to be handcuffed, but I would not have another handcuffing. So I fought, I was pinned, and I was handcuffed. So we can add resisting arrest to uh, at least one of a charge. Chris describing a typical skirmish with authorities, and... I foreknew and foresaw that I was going to end up in jail anyway. It was just popular in most of the other timelines. Chris, while awaiting legal proceedings on his incest charge, thinking that this was he was going to end up in prison anyway, despite the fact that, no, that absolutely would not be the case if Chris hadn't done anything illegal at all. I don't exactly see what um, the logic in this is, but whatever. Or Chris likes to exert or excuse logic or morality for the moment just for whatever he gets, including the law. Now, laws are a set of formal rules established by a society generally to protect its members and ensure the orderly function of society. Their observance is usually maintained by law enforcement and penalties are placed on those who disobey the laws. For Chris, however... They just serve as another determined in his endless quest for China, and a weapon with which to threaten his real and supposed enemies. As of 2018, Chris has seven misdemeanors, three from hitting Michael Snyder with his car, one from macing the yellow-shirted foe, two from failing to acquire the proper tags for Snoopy and Clover, and one for trespassing after being banned from Charlottesville Fashion Square, which resulted in him being placed on the therapeutic docket. If he hadn't been placed on the docket, he probably would have been serving some level of community service or some level of time behind uh, bars. I, I think that's how that works. <clears throat> Virginia has a free strikes law, which usually means that if someone is brought in for a third time for a felony or misdemeanor, the sentence is found guilty is more severe than usual. In some states, the sentence is life in prison. The specifics of a free strikes law vary by state, with some states having several such laws. Seeing as how Chris has never been sentenced to jail, to, to, to jail time despite several misdemeanors, he may not fall under the scope of the Virginia law. However, since the state's law seems to say that third-time violent offenders will receive harsher sentencing, and Chris appears to have two hitting Snyder and pepper spraying a manager, this could come into play if Chris ever finds himself facing charges for a third violent offence, which it should be noted he is currently not as of 2022. He has been charged with incest, not rape. If he had been charged with rape, absolutely Chris would have been in prison for possibly 20 years, because I know that in the state of Virginia, in, uh, incest is uh, guilty from, as, a, as a misdemeanor from anything from one to ten years in prison but considering if you uh imply the uh, the case of rape then absolutely the the sentencing is like far more severe but even more so in the case of somebody who's serving a third misdemeanor and one thing that i should also point out is that for anyone who has had the misfortune i want to say or rather well not really misfortune but more for the sake of actual evidence seen Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History Part 85, the last in the first season of uh, Gino Samuel's documentary series, 
you'll know that there is a very specific line in that where Chris absolutely states that at several point that at some point Bob asked Chris to stop. Call it what you will, but one thing that's very very observant uh, when Chris was uh, writing or, or relaying all these things to Bella is that Chris said it without any hint of irony whatsoever. He said it as though it was fact. So you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that 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 means that Chris would have been screwed. Literally. Ironically, in Chris's birth year of 1982, Virginia passed a law that would protect citizens from dangerous repeat offenders. Unfortunately, they could not protect Michael Snyder from being hit with a car. Yeah, I think the state of Virginia has quite a bit to answer to in this case. The yellow-shirted foe, same deal, from being pepper-sprayed, countless innocent women from being stalked and harassed, and Barbara Chandler from being fucked by her own son. Ironically enough, Chris's grandfather occupation is given as a security guard according to his death certificate. Hmm. So, here is Chris's understanding of the law. Let's see how he sees this. I have been giving him reasons since the police came in June of 2008, and nothing has sunken into that clown head of his, according to Michael Snyder. As his grip on reality... Chris's understanding of the law is tenuous at best and dangerously naive at worst. Chris legitimately believes trolling is illegal. He regularly threatens internet trolls with legal action and makes no distinction in severity between a troll threatening violence against Chris and a troll uploading a harmless picture of Rose Chew with a pickle to the internet. Chris himself is prone to making extremely violent threats such as threatening to murder Vivian G and her entire family because of her creating the audiobooks. He's done everything from calling the police to convincing his father to write to then-President George W. Bush in an attempt to get rid of his Encyclopedia Dramatica page. He has even poorly attempt. Now, to be honest, at this point, you may be saying, what, was, what, would, what, what would the motive of getting rid of the uh, Dramatica page be if Chris was not, you know looking to look for work anyway, and anything on the internet would have smeared his name. Like, I I mean, I know you could probably say there were other things outside of looking for work, but what was, was it just so that people didn't get the wrong idea about Chris? Was that virtually, was that the only reason why he was hot-footed about this? Uh, maybe. He has even poorly attempted to impersonate Sir the President in a hilarious attempt to convince the trolls at ED to take his page, and has attempted to contact the former President, Barack Obama, to stop people from posting gay ads on the Wikipedia. Chris also believes that the laws in Quickville and the laws stated in Solitude should be enforced in real life. Good lord. If you know anything at all what those might be from... Nearly, was it like 15 years in prison for, for being a, a homosexual? Is that, that's, in the eyes of Chris, that apparently that's what's going to... Even going to the extent that Magic Chan was going to psychically read the minds of every citizen of Quickville so that nobody is contemplating such thoughts. That's like 1984 if it reached its logical conclusion. Chris himself doesn't have much respect for laws and rules particularly when their enforcement inconveniences, inconveniences him. During his time at Target, he saw nothing wrong with exploiting the free refill policy and loitering for hours at a time in a privately owned establishment while harassing female customers and apparently solicitating hanky-panky. Chris often remarks that his emotional state entirely justifies his actions, stating in VivTag's aim chat, that he should be excused for dis disturbing the peace by literally screaming no loudly in the middle of a crowded ball. Self-contradictory as ever, though Chris's disregard of many laws does not stop him from rigidly observing others, often with completely skewed priorities. In Solitude Special 4, his cartoon avatar makes a point of obeying the speed limit while on his way to confront Liquid Chris and has holed him with a deadly weapon. In a May 2010 video, Chris states that he believes a man who brutally beat his girlfriend to death with his bare hands deserved 20 years in prison for his crimes, which is just twice the penalty he wants for smoking one cigarette. Also, 
Chris has very little respect for those who enforce the law. Not necessarily uh, an issue that is like, well, being it's been here and there for, for the world for many, many years. But, well, let's just hear Chris's takes on this. Verbal combat has started, and during the fight, I ran off. Still giving... How can you say there's even a fight if Chris just runs away? I, I ran off, still giving verbal punishment, as well as to finger, and many cursier hamehas. I nearly backed onto him with my car, and I gave him another finger, and then I dashed off. An actual excerpt from Chris's diary. The above quote pretty much defines Chris's attitude towards law enforcement officials. He feels that it is completely appropriate to flip off, insult, and lie to people who are simply doing their jobs. And of course, as any rational person would understand, running away from law enforcement officials is a seriously bad idea. Chris is truly a rebel without a cause or effect. The correspondence with Jackie revealed that in the hearings on his target incident, Chris thought that his work with the Pokemon TCG League would let him off the hook. It didn't. In reality, the court probably acquitted him either of a technicality or insufficient evidence. Chris probably mentioned the volunteer work because he believed a person's merits, no matter how unrelated, would automatically make one innocent of all charges. It is also telling that he recounted the charge as soliciting, whereas the actual charge was disorderly conduct. He feels that he was only persecuted because of his love quest efforts, and not because he was tarred raging. Of interesting note, is that, the contra is that contrary to Chris's general political views, he seems to be in favour of, or at least accepting of, gun control legislation. Whether or not he has a firm understanding of what he's saying, we'll likely never know. M I think it's the, well, to be honest, if I had to make a suggestion, it's that Chris would be more than satisfied if the law made it so that Chris had the right to bear arms, but nobody had the rights to point them at him. It falls in line with just about everything else, I suppose. Interestingly, Chris seems to have a very skewed view of the idea of self-defense, which is then exemplified with the acquisition, uh, acqu acquisition of pepper spray. Pepper spray, like most defensive weapons, should be used as a last resort to keep people from attacking you. As with the GameStop attacks, Chris uses it as a means to keep anyone he doesn't like away from him. Using that event as an example, the man he sprayed wasn't even near him, and Chris decided to spray a quick spritz on his chest without any provocation. It got worse when, days later, he began a commotion in Walmart using the device. To Chris, it's the ultimate troll and jerk -op deterrent, when in actuality, he's waving around assault charges on a stick, and saying, don't call anybody. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, well... Once again, ladies and gentlemen, well, as they stated, is that the uh, the manager of the game store that uh, Chris assaulted, he, was, he wasn't doing anything. He didn't even approach Chris. He just sort of like stood to the side and Chris thought that was more than enough uh, of uh, motivation to do what he did. And again, this is something that could have been avoided altogether. I mean, Chris would have probably still been in some hot water for vandalizing Sonic Boom displays anyway, but this sort of, like, really comes out of left field, even for Chris. Timeline. The following is a list of incidents that Chris has had with the law. This list may not be complete. In a telephone conversation with Ivy in 2009, Bob told her that Chris had in the past six or seven incidents with the law, and yet this article lists only three incidents that precede 2010. But, nevertheless. 2004. On September 11, 2004, Chris was detained at Charlottesville Fashion Square for loitering, and continually arguing with the staff over several months. This incident is depicted in sub-episode 1. Chris was banned from returning to the mall on his own and without his parents' company. However, it appears that this ban was lifted or ignored soon afterwards. 2005 On July 20th, 2005, Chris was charged with disorderly conduct and trespassing, 
at Target as depicted in sub-episode 7 and sub-episode 8. After two hearings, prosecutors chose to drop the case and Chris was not punished. Five days later, Chris caused an auto accident when he followed another car too closely and rear-ended it. This went to court on the 12th of September 2005. He was fined $30 and had to pay $56 in court costs. 2010 Chris's various runs in at the game place have resulted in the cops being called on him on a couple of times. At least once after Chris called in his parents, after he was initially banned from the location and tried to weasel his way back in. And again, when he was trespassed on the property, though he wasn't charged with anything on either occasion. On the 4th of June 2010, Chris made yet another pilgrimage to the game place. Chris was armed with his camera, and while Mike was concerned that Chris wanted pictures of his daughter for disturbing reasons, Chris maintains that he merely wanted a picture of Mike for him to use as a dartboard. Still disturbingly enough, but in entirely different ways. Chris was caught in the parking lot despite trying to run away and was questioned by the police, who made him delete the pictures he had taken and told him to quit his shit. Chris made his 6 June 2010 video in response to these events. 2011 In a May 2011 Tom Boys and Tom Girls of Virginia post, Chris said that he has begun to use the ladies' restroom at his local mall, while dressed in drag. He recounts an incident in which a woman complains and tattles on me, and a stereotypical brute male shouts me out. I felt embarrassed when, in skirt, I am still going to the ladies because there is no going back for me. This supposed brute male may or may not have been with more security. In his three new videos posted after an eight month long hiatus from YouTube, he tries to do something which some viewers of the Chandler show believe to be blackmail. Chris admitted it by typing the word blackmail in tags for last for the last of them. However, trolls hoping for a lawsuit saga shouldn't get their hopes up, because it's unlikely any of the trolls threatened by it would want to report him. Given that they've all been trying to get him back onto the internet for months and wouldn't want to drive him off again, not to mention Chris probably ha- doesn't have anything on them at all, note that under Virginia law, his demands are more likely to be considered extortion, still a class 5 felony, rather than blackmail. In the same video, Chris also point blank accused Mike of molesting his daughter, all while admitting that he doesn't have any concrete proof of his allegation. Given how prone he is to accuse others of slandering him, like pointing out his bad qualities that are extremely evident to everyone but Chris, Chris's accusations are very hypocritical. If Mike did not want to sue Chris in civil court, he would indeed have a case against him as Chris's allegations are textbook defamation. However, it's questionable what Snyder would win in litigation, aside from a PlayStation 3 and numerous children's toys. On the 28th of October 2011, Chris ended up in the worst possible scenario, netting a felony charge and two misdemeanors in what appears to be a third attempt to enter the game place, although all charges were reduced to misdemeanors upon sentencing. As a direct result of his 28th October 2011 run-in with Michael Snyder, Chris had found both himself and his mother on the receiving end of a civil suit. Having been sentenced to community service and put under probation and being charged with paying Snyder's medical bills. This may very well have been the first time that he has felt ramifications for his accusations and threats. However, it is also much more likely that he simply doesn't care or still feels as if he were the real victim in all this. Especially because Chris and Bob blew out almost the entirety of Bob's inheritance for this uh, case to hire Rob Bell as their uh, attorney and lawyer. We And it would have been the same result, so I'm not entirely sure why they thought it was a good idea. Unless, of course, they legitimately felt like they were both going to jail. They should have, but what can I say? 2012. On the 4th of February 2012, it was revealed on his Facebook that Chris no longer has respect for any sort of law enforcement after the events of the 28th of October 2011, officially deeming everyone who upholds the law a jerk cop. At the same time, he revealed another encounter with the boys in blue that day, as he attempted to pass out flyers while at the mall, 
encouraging others to stay away from the game place. Two jerk-ops, or as Chris puts it, a jerk-op and an accomplice, approached him. Despite the officers simply wanting to talk to him and letting him know that he wasn't in any trouble, Chris's paranoia kicked in and he ran away. While the story gives that Chris uh, seems to hint that the officers just wanted to tell him to knock off the distribution of flyers, Chris believed otherwise, citing that one of them called out his name, making him think that they wanted to post another encounter with him on the internet. He escaped by driving into a Mitsubishi, most likely replacing the dying piece of scrap that is Sonshu, and driving off. On the 12th of April 2012, Chris announced the loss of his virginity, giving off strong hints that he had slept with a hired prostitute. He all but confirmed this on the 1st of May, when he said that he found her on the back page, a now defunct uh, website that was, I believe, shut down by the FBI in early 2019, most likely meaning that he, that he found it on the website backpage.com. Well, oh yeah, that it literally states right there. A Craigslist clone shut down by the FBI that also solicited prostitutes. Chris's prostitute in question was codenamed Mia Ham, as seen on the website. In the state of Virginia, this constitutes as a Class 1 misdemeanor and is therefore illegal. It is unknown whether or not Chris is aware of this, but it's very likely that he is, or he simply doesn't care. On the 28th of April 2012, Chris revealed another incident in the mall before his Facebook note on the 30th of March 2012. Chris got into a shouting match with a troll on his cell phone at the mall. The shouting did not go unnoticed, and Chris bolted once security was called in. On the 25th of April, Chris received a ban from the mall, though it is unknown if it was for this incident in particular or an incident that happened between those two dates. On the 10th of July 2012, Chris was arraigned, uh, arraigned in court for the 28th of October 2011 incident after calling Snyder a thieving liar who doesn't deserve a red cent in the courtroom. Chris was sentenced to community service and put under one year of probation. He also ordered to pay Snyder's medical bills. 2013 in September 2013, Chris committed an act of vandalism, an arrestable offence, by defacing a Hexbox One display at Walmart, but got off easy by merely just being banned from the store. Given his furious reaction to this and his track record with a certain store owner who also did the same, it remains to be seen if Chris would follow up on his threat to have his revenge. Also, much like his tantrum at the Fashion Square Mall in 2005, Chris was confronted by a jerk op at a local restaurant after scratching a woman's car with his, and screaming out loud in public. Chris claimed he was cursing God for all his misfortune recently, despite literally all of it being Chris's fault. That's the thing I want people to understand is that, whether people like it or not, these things, they were done by Chris and they were Chris's fault. They weren't mine or anyone else's and they can't be blamed on his autism. These were what Chris did and therefore they are his problem and his fault, and his responsibility. 2014 On the 29th of March 2014, a report surfaced on the Quickie Forum saying that earlier that month, Chris had been spotted trying to steal merchandise from Best Buy. The next day, Chris denied the truthfulness of the report, but Kim confirmed that the attempted shoplifting had indeed occurred. On Friday, the 26th of December 2014, Chris vandalised a sonic boom display in GameStop in the Charlotte's Fair Fashion Square and was forced out due to a previous ban, but not before he attacked a member of staff with pepper spray who was calling security. By the 28th, he was confirmed to be in jail. He was released on bail on Monday, the 29th of December. 2015. Throughout most of 2015, Chris behaved himself, presumably because his sojourn to the jailhouse was fresh in his memory. His punishment for the pepper spray incident was eventually decided after seven hearings in October, a very light sentencing of a three-figure fine and a six-month prison sentence that he won't have to serve unless he breaks the law again during probation. 2016. 
And what you're seeing here, these are the fines that Chris received for the uh, the the for not doing the rabies checks or actually uh, soliciting you know his uh, dogs uh, properly in the in the way that you're supposed to, so that they're actually um, safe and free from diseases if they were happen to attack somebody by accident. On July 1st of uh, 2016, Chris had to finally pay his $541 fine for his 2014 to 15 court hearing. His probation also appears to have ended earlier in the year in April. In August, Chris was fined $121 by Green County for two charges, each misdemeanors of failing to acquire dog tag and rabies licenses for his, for his and Barbara's dogs, Clover and Snoopy. In November, Chris made several death threats against President Trump. He is blissfully unaware that threatening the president or president-elect is one of the few restrictions of freedom of speech in America, and could land Chris with a fine and up to five years in prison. That is absolutely true as well. That's one of the, the only thing, the only problem with freedom of speech is that you can't pray that your president is should be dead that's one of the things you absolutely cannot do to and 2018 the manager of the wall uh, of the mall threw a demand to uh, late trespassing notice against me while i was there a few weeks ago that is all caught me in a trap like at the place except i didn't go to freaking jail okay according to chris now this was during uh Chris's trespassing case in 2018 at the Fashion Square Mall. In March, Chris was charged with trespass after forbidden a misdemeanor count. The offense, how bad do you think uh, you're, you, you, you know, things when you're banned for something for life, how bad do you think Chris must have been for that to happen? The offence occurred on the 23rd of March and was filed under the Albemarle Traffic Slash Criminal Court. Chris repeatedly signed his name as Chris Chan Sonichu on court documents, despite it not being his legal name, though no action was taken by the court staff on the matter. Chris was represented by a public defender. After several continuances, the court decided to direct Chris to a court diversion program, the Therapeutic Docket, for nine months as an alternative to a jail sentence. The trespass case was transferred to Charlottesville's jurisdiction on the 10th of July to supervise the docket check-ins. Until Chris graduated from the docket on the 23rd of April 2019, resulting in the court dismissing his trespassing case. 2019 on the 23rd of April, Chris saw uh, the early end of Chris's therapeutic docket and the dismissal of his trespassing after forbidden charge. Chris trolled himself again on the 5th of August when he absentmindedly hit someone else's vehicle with Sonchu. Police soon came to him and his mother about it. Barb was more involved with the situation at hand, while Chris soothed himself by kicking the police car several times before the police left. Fortunately for Chris, he was not penalised or arrested. And Chris put this information on Twitter. So, why Chris felt that was a good idea, I have absolutely no clue. He could have avoided so much aggro if he just said that he didn't kick the car. And if nobody saw him do it, then again, Chris would have be got away with this scot-free. 2021. Here we go. He said he was dating this girl for months. Um, this 72-year-old lady, he said he wanted to confess something to me, and I suspected it because he said it was illegal. Bella, on Chris telling her about his incestuous relationship with his mother. One of the darkest events in Chris Tree happened in 2021, which came close to spelling the end of the tale of Chris Chan as we know it. A series of events so controversial and massive that they caused this very wiki to crash due to the event uh, persistently trending on Twitter, assumingly even overtaking the Olympic Games for a time. On the 29th of July 2021, the incest call, which is what it's been currently referred to as, where he had casually admitted to repeatedly having sex with his mother since late June, was leaked. Chris also indicated that Bob was confused, telling him to stop at times raising the possibility of it being non-consensual, especially since some have speculated that Bob may have been suffering from dementia. Now, to this day, it's never been confirmed that Bob has suffered from dementia. 
However, just because it's not been confirmed does not technically mean it, she does not have that either. Bella played along for several minutes, pretending to approve of Chris's new habit, so she could record more information. After hundreds of police uh, contacted, uh, the, well, hundreds of people contacted the police as a result of the leaks, authorities uh, conducted a welfare check on Bob and issued an EPO, an emergency protective order, on Chris on the following day. Essentially, a temporary restraining order that would last around a week prohibiting access to Barbara and his home until the 5th of August 2021. Chris's neighbours took care of their pets after both Chandlers were taken from their home. Made temporarily homeless by this turn of events, Chris decided to make matters even worse for himself, as Chris is always prone to do in situations like these, by committing yet another crime. He stole $750 from Barbara's bank account to pay for hotel accommodations and elevate uh, his negative bank balance at the time, which left him about $550 after the latter fact, before shelling out $384 for the hotel and wasting most of the remaining money on toys, because of course he fucking did, leaving him with next to nothing yet again, $1.03 according to a Bank of America alert. This crime, however, which, land Chris, which would land Chris in much hotter water, than many other times he stole from his parents. After discovering what Chris had done and being lied to about it during the confrontation, Noel immediately cut ties and washed his hands of Chris. You know what, I, I must admit, I feel like really, really bad for like uh, Joshua Moon, otherwise known as Noel, for all this, because Noel had been sort of a little bit by Chris's side, except from a very mutual distance for at least, um, like, seven seven possibly eight years at this point and Chris just let Noel down because all could all Chris could do was let himself down time and time and time again. It makes it, it probably must have set it in Noel's mind about what was even the point. Because I absolutely believe Noel's intentions were absolutely for the good and Chris just didn't just didn't care. And proceeded to shut down the GoFundMe page intended to aid him on his planned trip to Everfree Northwest, who banned him from entry after learning about the news, and refunded everyone involved. It should be noted that Chris had intended to use some of the funds to pay back his mother once they cleared. But, as stated before, he took the funds without permission and in violation of the protective order, which is, at the very least, a strong case for a theft charge to be laid on him later. Chris's Patreon, due to the scandal, also came under review, leaving many to speculate that it would most likely see deletion on top of his long-term neglect of the page and his subscribers. Sure enough, on the 2nd of August 2021, his account was suspended, pending review, which remains until the creator logs back in. However, considering Chris's incarceration, it is unlikely he will be able to do so, and I don't think he's even tried to do that to this day ensuring that his account will permanently remain under review. Oddly enough, or perhaps due to his enhanced delusions, Chris remained in seemingly good spirits during his arrest. Despite the arrest being far more major than anything else he has previously been charged for, and potentially ruining his life, or what is left of it, Chris did not resist arrest and even disturbingly stated that being frisked by one of the officers felt good, before being taken away. He also noted that their dimensional merge was in the process of happening, nobody could give a shit, which is likely why he believed that he could weasel his way out of this somehow. Chris's case was initially up for review on the 8th of August 2023. He was uh, arraigned, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, um, arraigned on the 5th of August 2021 and held without bond pending a mental health evaluation until the 16th of September. Likely making matters worse by interrupting the court proceedings to beg for his toys. The hearing for 16th of September was continued until the 18th of November, apparently for more time to evaluate Chris. During this time, he was held at the Central Virginia Regional Jail, after continu another continuance was then granted, 
with the next hearing taking place on the 3rd of February 2022. Another continuance was granted to 28th of July 2022. However, Chris was transferred to Western State Hospital on the 28th of February 2022 for treatment of incompetency and then was returned to the jail. 2023. On the 27th of March 2023, Chris was released from jail. For several months, his whereabouts were unknown. On the 28th of August 2023, Chris's case was dismissed by the court. During Chris's live stream on the 26th of October 2023, he became visibly nervous when sirens unexpectedly sounded in the background, indicating that he harbors a lingering fear of being arrested again. And then, so that's just the list of all the events Chris has had. Nearly 20 years of being in trouble. For what? Because Chris ever thought he was in the right all of these times. Especially in the case of the gameplays and then Bob. And several times where, well, as you'll see again, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's, it's tantamount to when Chris got arrested in 2021. That he just sort of went along with it. Because I think he knew there wasn't really much he could do. Which might be another symptom of guilt ladies and gentlemen. The fact that what is the point in trying to deny reality. We know Chris will do that at nauseam. But well let's, let's keep going. Chris's parents and the law. It's not hard to figure out why Chris thinks the law should serve him and him alone. His parents too have the same problem. When Chris was thrown out of the Cub Scouts for an unknown incident, his parents attempted to sue the Boy Scouts of America for discrimination. When Chris threw a tantrum that required him to be restrained, Bob attempted to sue the school for restraining him. When Bob and Bob had their absurd case against Green County used against them, their first reaction was run to another county. Bob claims that a man in Richmond by the name of Jamie Dunn tried to get him thrown in jail circa 1999 for unknown reasons. This may be part of the reason the Chandlers decided to move back to Ruckersville in the year of 2000. When Mims and Lucas took a picture of Chris and uploaded it to the internet, Chris's parents threatened them with legal action, but as usual, never followed through. When Snorlax thought she had indigestion, she acted like she was going to sue the Chinese establishment for f the food that came from. When it turned out to be colitis, she dropped the subject and Chris did as well and it was never mentioned again. When Alec created uh, or called the, Al the Chandler household posing as the gameplay's employee Matthew Noble, Bob and Bob claimed that taking pictures of somebody without their knowledge or consent was not illegal. This came after threatening to sue Mims and Lucas for doing exactly that. During that same call, Bob would not, not countenance the idea that an individual can be prohibited from private property, saying it's a business place, which has no bearing on private property laws. On the 28th of October 2011, Bob was arrested for not only fleeing the scene of an accident, but also felony assault on a police officer. An extremely foolish crime that a remotely sensible person would never commit, due to the serious consequences attached to it. Mandatory minimum of six months imprisonment or on conviction. However, the recent death of her husband, her age, her bad health and her hopeless dependent clod of a son seem to have helped elicit her some clemency. On the 10th of July 2012, Barb was arraigned in court for her to participation in the 28th of October 2011 incident. She was sentenced to community service and served two-year probation. On the 2nd of August 2021, Chris was charged with incest with Bob. He was charged not with rape, meaning that Bob may have consented to the acts or simply did not want to pursue rape charges against her own son. On the 23rd of November 2021, Bob totaled her van when she failed to yield right of way and got into an accident with a tractor trailer. Bob paid a $30 fine and $76 in court costs the following month. According to a jail letter on the 4th of July 2022, Chris had been attempting to blackmail Bob into moving out of 14 Branch Lane Court, with various crimes he claims she is guilty of. 
These include negligence towards her pets, abusive behaviour towards Chris, and her use of Chris's monthly tugboat for herself. Obviously, it is unknown if Bob is really guilty of any of these things. Chris's original and official laws. Now, um, now I, I have to apologise. I'm actually recording this about like 20 minutes later. It's because without wanting to like, give too much away is that I had to like catch my breath because I felt like I was becoming like very unwell for the last couple of minutes. So I had to uh, put the brakes on that very quickish and sharpish. So there we are. It's also probably not even worth having the lights on or trying to like cut or like trying to like shut the curtains or anything like that. I already look quite pale. And th th this isn't light you're seeing here. <sighs> Chris believes the police in real life are corrupt and sees them in the same light as he sees the jerk cops in his comic. The jerk cops act as a stand in for police who wronged him and are portrayed as being imposters with no legal authority, probably indicating that Chris does not recognise real policemen as legitimate authority, which is probably something a crazy person would do, so there's that. In light of these things, Chris has his own spin on the law. The penalties for drinking and smoking and internet harassment involve physical violence, including a kick in the teeth, which Chris inexplicably portrays as a punch in the first and only of his supposed series of Q&A videos. On the 31st of December 2009, Chris orated about a law he wanted to be made to prevent Jack Fadius from using that ad space he paid for legally. I have the instinct and I have already snail mailed President Barack Obama on how this sort of bad advertisement is going on and how it is wrong and should be made illegal. On how if the main captain does not want or is offended with the listed ads within his own website or works, regardless of who controls the ad space, would remove these ads or face jail time. And the FBI would be fully involved in all this. No, they wouldn't. And they have the power, maybe, tools, possibly, and balls. Well, definitely not to seek, hunt down, and bring the individual internet trolls and ad spammers. As anyone can see, Chris is seeking the direct intervention of the president of his country and beseeching him to outlaw advertisements he doesn't like. Outside from the fact that Obama himself couldn't have done anything about this even if he wanted to, the fact is, is that Chris has mandated by law to display the ads Jack paid to display. Chris should have written to his congressman about this rather than the president. But either way, he would have received no response. This attitude is also reflected in his relationship with Mary Lee Walsh. More than a decade ago, she put a stop to Chris soliciting sex on her campus. War ensued and Chris received a well-deserved time out for his behaviour. Six years later, in 2009, Chris decided it was time to make peace. He went to her office and left her a framed hand-drawn apology on the doorstep out, out of the blue. Her reaction was to file a trespassing notice. Chris disastrously believed that since he didn't read the letter and returned to the sender, he wasn't liable for it. Thankfully, Chris didn't trespass again. Towards Mary Lee Walsh, I should say. Mailbag 55 uh, persists a few more original laws. One, that it should be made illegal for men to ever show their bare chest because, according to Chris, no one in the entire world wants to see a man's bare chest, presumably disregarding women, gay men, and boxing enthusiasts. And two, he wants to force all women on any kind of relationship to wear rings, purely for his benefit, of course, thus defeating all symbolism and significance of them. In the aftermath of distancing himself from the internet, Chris began to formulate a new law, Bill for Anti-Online Bad Mouthing. Starting with his second flip note, Don't Get Trolled, the details are unknown. But Chris essentially wants to make so that online nobody can ever speak negatively of anybody else under threat of prosecution. There do exist laws against cybercrime and online harassment, but these laws vary by county, and or country I should say and concern rather more serious deeds than drawing Rose Chew with a dick, 
And so, even if Chris's laws were somehow implemented federally, only his fellow USA residents would be held accountable. Chris's failing to comprehend that people besides Americans use the internet, or worse, assuming the entire world could be held to the USA's laws. In Quickville, during the Idea Guys, during the Idea Guys saga, Chris was told that Jamster Sonichu had been put on trial for molesting Punchy. She didn't want Jamster to suffer in jail as he had, so he tried using his psychic powers to talk to the Quickville judge to convince him to release Jamster, regardless of the crime he had committed. The idea guys informed him that the judge was unconvinced since Chris was no longer mayor, so Chris then turned his attention to the jurors. This worked, but sparked a city-wide riot. In the comic The law, such as it is, in the comics is a horrifying totalitarianism where anybody anywhere is subject to the whims of a dictator. In Quickville, Chris is Mayor Reed God King and was banned many things in the city. Smoking or drinking alcohol would lead to be one of either sentenced to 10 years in prison or a 1,500 US dollar fine, which considers Chris as an equally bad punishment Quickville has its own currency, however, so despite being nothing more than a small city, and why fines are levied in US dollars is unknown, importing tobacco or even alcohol incurs a greater punishment than murder or rape. However, it should be noted that Chris repealed the law against alcohol in June of 2009. The Rose Chews often congregate to protest for women's rights, these protests usually involve nudity and or pornography. They campaign for basic, archaic things like the eligibility to vote, suggesting that Chris, or one of his predecessors, has imposed discriminating laws against women in Quickville. It is never clear whether or not Quickville is legally part of the United States, and thus subject to its federal laws, as Chris characteristically sends mixed messages a lot. Some things are distinctly American, the aforementioned US dollar fines, for instance. However, there are foreign countries in the real world that use US dollars. But Quickville has its currency and its own set of laws, the likes of which would never be permitted in a developed or even underdeveloped country. Even if Quickville were some sort of Vatican-like sovereign state, the only arrangement that makes even the slightest amount of sense is that Quickville is just a sovereign state on US soil. Chris doesn't seem to have thought this out though, and believes the mayor of a town is legally entitled to act as an authoritarian dictator. As a mayor, Chris does nothing bureaucratic, even or ever, and makes his secretary do all the paperwork, as per his thoughts on women. While he goes off on another one of his sweetheart searches, he has mandated dating education classes for students so that they can learn to go on dates as well as how to stay straight. Actual police officers did not appear until quite late in the series, and even then, they did nothing whatsoever, giving the impression that Chris and his Pokemon abominations are the only things standing between peace and violent anarchy. However, Sonichu issue 9 seems to reveal that there are three sets of other prospect protectors, a possibly nondescript police force, distinct from Merrily Walsh's jerk -ops, as well as the team of Power Rangers and a team of Transformers. Is Quickville under martial law? Jack Faddy is calling out the truth as he sees it. <laughs> and if you don't know exactly what martial law is, well, prepare to be engaged. In conversations with Jack Faddeus, Chris revealed that Quickville is the home of a parliamentary force equipped with tanks, which he calls the Police Force, and all his Electric Hedgehog Pokémon, enjoy immunity from prosecution, and are above the law. And this is to the fact that Chris cannot be deposed as mayor. There is no elections. And the fact that the police and a fleet of superpowered goons obey anything Chris demands of them. And it paints a very frightening picture. According to Chris, Magichan mentally scans the city perimeters for any sexual acts and reports any homosexual activity to the authorities. The participants are then tried and fined heavily $500 or 50 hours of community service, 
Apparently in Quickville, the Fourth Amendment of the US Constitution does not apply in matters of personal sexual choice, and neither does the US Supreme Court ruling finding sodomy laws to be unconstitutional. Even though Chris's deranged laws exist only within his city, state, county of whatever of Quickville, he exacts his deranged fury onto people whether they're actually in his jurisdiction or not. Sonitu issue 10 shows four distinct crimes committed outside of Quickville, the destruction of the four cent garbage building, the murder of one of hundreds of 100 alleged trolls in said destruction, breaking and entering, and destroying internet files and property. There was no evidence to suggest that this act of mass murder was even investigated by the authorities, and the comic portrays this act of terrorism as Chris and his goons heroically defeating a gang of criminals. Chris may be able to murder without being reprimanded, but of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. Following the death of Simona, the culprits Alec, Mao, Sean and Evan are subjected to a show trial, and given no defence attorney by the state, violating the Sixth Amendment, forcing Sean to act as their lawyer despite being high as a kite. There is no solid evidence presented for the murder charge, aside from the Voltorb remote, which the prosecutor never tried to prove belonged to them, and wholly unreliable, physical evidence extracted by Magichan. When they're railroaded and found guilty, they're killed by the people they've wronged, read murder brutally by cartoon characters, in a gross violation of the Eighth Amendment forbidding cruel and unusual punishment. Demonstrating Chris's limited understanding of trials, as his knowledge of trials stems purely from television, the Kangaroo Court interrogates both elements of civil and criminal trials, the Aspopedia 4 are not prosecuted for murder by a state attorney as per a criminal trial, but also charged with defamation of character, libel and copyright infringement, as well as several charges such as profanity to the max that would hold no water in any actual court on earth. By Chris and his cohorts as per a civil trial, surely enough, Chris, Sonichu and Rosechu are sitting in a benchmarked plaintiff. That both civil and criminal charges are included in one trial not only demonstrates a poor understanding of the courtroom process, but Chris should know he's been there often enough these last few years, but it's further proof that Chris considers slanderous mockeries and other torts on par with major crimes such as murder and assault. To add to the equation, one cannot be given a death sentence, or any sentence for that matter, for being guilty in a civil trial, but in the Aspopedia 4 trial, civil charges are the primary reason for the death of sentence. In summary, the Quickville court system is a constitutional nightmare that violates multiple articles and amendments and has no concept of due process. One must wonder why it is allowed to exist within the borders of the US. Where it is obvious by now, any semblance of law in Quickville exists solely to further the wishes of its tyrannical and murderous creator god. True and true. And I don't really feel like we need to like technically go over this because it's sort of... It's not so much that it isn't like a, the, the case is over, but rather it's probably something that's going to be continuing for a, a very long time afterwards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of Chris and the Law. A fairly... <sighs> a fairly confusing uh, sort of read towards the end, where you find out that the Chris, the, the Law is only there to serve uh, the likes of Chris, because Chris cannot be shown in any way whatsoever to do harm to other people, despite the fact Chris does harm to other people. And also the fact that Lo and behold, there's just things I don't understand about why Chris thinks it's a good idea to do half the things on this list, and why Chris will fight until the very ends of the earth to this day, that he is completely and utterly justified in what they do. That's how you know that even at this stage, it probably won't be the last time Chris will be involved in breaking the law, because, well... Chris, like they said, like this article has mentioned before, Chris is a rebel without a cause or even effect. So, make of that what you will. And I cannot wait to sort of you guys again. 
in the next video. Take care and bye-bye for now.